Hi, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Ancient Warfare Answers with me, Murray. Um, it's chilly here in uh, Australia as opposed to getting warmer um, in the Northern Hemisphere. So uh, that's why I'm all rugged up. So today we have a question from Robert. I'm going to read it. It's a long one, um, but I quite like what he said and food for thought. Uh, and then, um, of course, you can also ask us a question, as you now know. Uh, you can send us an email, send us a telegram, a post, postcard, letter, uh, however you like. Send us uh, a message on Facebook, comment on one of the other podcasts or videos, um, and ask us a question for your 10-minute weekly Ancient Warfare Fix with me saying something uh, about Ancient Warfare, hopefully relevant and useful. Not provocative, provocative but perhaps provocative. Anyway. You, of course, can also back us on the Patreon uh, forward slash Ancient Warfare podcast and back us at a level of Optio, Legionary, or indeed Centurion. Today's question is from Robert. I've been a subscriber for a couple to your pu publication for, as well as a fan of your Ancient Warfare podcast for a number of years. So I feel I've earned the right to ask a question. You have the right. Of course you do. Uh, even if you're a new subscriber. And the hive mind. Well, the hive mind is me. Um, if the hive mind have more answers, I'll ask them uh, at the bigger podcast. Why javelins? Robert asks, it seems that a bow would be a much better weapon for skirmish in the ancient world, but it seems that the javelin uh, armed light troops may have been the most common type in Europe, at least. Additionally, if using javelins, why not an atl atl to throw them with? I know about the leather thing wrapped around the shaft to impart spin, which plainly would make a difference in hitting a target, but one has to believe that range would be an important factor while skirmishing. So, fabulous. Well, the interesting thing, why javelins? I think the reality is that the javelin has versatility and its limited range is an advantage rather than a disadvantage to uh, the kinds of troops who use javelins. So obviously the the, the, the Roman infantry uh, have their pila um, and also their hasta. And then once those pila are thrown, we find that they engage with their gladii uh, in combat. But going back to earlier sections of, of warfare, we have lots and lots of javeliners who begin by specialising. Now, if we go back to early hoplite warfare, of course, you've got the idea that the early hoplites have javelins. We've got lots of uh, depictions of hoplites with more than one spear, some indeed with the throwing thong, so showing that they threw some kind of missile as well as had thrusting spears, the dory um, of later history. So the interesting thing with that, of course, is that clearly there's an evolution there from a, a throwing hoplite um, to a non-throwing hoplite. Uh, but at the same time, we have specialist units of Scythians and Thracians and Agrianians and others who are clearly javelin throwing troops. Then, of course, you've got other specialist troops who are, you know, uh, operating with archery, Cretans most famously, but others too, the, the, the Scythian archers in, in Athens, for instance. But also jam, uh, people who throw with slingers, that's the word I don't call slingers, uh, you know, whether they be from Rhodes or the Balearic Islands. And so they've got sort of uh, specialist skills. And I think that one of the things, even though we've got the Agrianians and several other groups where their skills in throwing the javelin or fighting with uh, javelins and light accoutrement is a specialist skill, I think the javelin is probably less specialized than slinging, uh, even though slinging obviously is kind of ubiquitous and universal. There's far less slinging going on um, in a military context outside of some very, very specific areas that, you know, the Rhodian slingers and the, and the Balearic slingers are, are sort of, they're identified with that fighting style. So, and in, in terms of units of fighting in that particular style, you know, slings are and sled bullets and they're, they're, you know, all over the archaeological record. They're dangerous, they're, they're deadly, they can be flung far and wide. But I think the interesting thing, and the same with archery, is that archery, of course, is, is generally a, not a direct archery fire in, in ancient warfare. It's normally over, whether it be your legions and you're firing over your legions or you're firing from the flanks or uh, even in the Persian warfare, you've got the front rank of spearmen and then behind them is a certain number of archers. So they're indirect fire rather than direct fire. Uh, although, of course, they probably had direct fire. I've just been reading a fascinating uh, piece on, on different arrowhead types in the ancient world, which obviously you have some that are penetrative, one, some that are cutting, some that are uh, all sorts of things like that. Anyway, getting back to javelins, um, I think that one of the advantages of a javelin is that, A, 
you can throw it more densely ranked than other uh, weapons. And B, uh, it's not really hindered by your armor. Uh, and again, the the the, the hoplite and then the la- the Roman legionary and the Roman development. You know, we have men able to throw their pila when they're armored, whereas perhaps um, you know armored archers are a less likely thing. I'm not denying the presence of armored archers, but that that they are still a heavy infantryman, even if they're throwing. A, pe- a javelin of some kind. Then, of course, you've got the idea that the limited range on the javelin, if you throw your javelin volleys and then follow it up with a, a charge with swords, you can follow it up. Whereas if it's going to be archery or slings, the the, the, the greater distance of those weapons means that following those up with a, with a, with a, uh, a rain, you know, an attack with swords is, is, a much longer run, um, so perhaps there's a there's a throw volleys of javelins and charge uh, aspect to it. Now, of course, there's a problem there in the sense that in several battle accounts of ancient Roman battle, we find pila being thrown late in the battle rather than early. So this idea that it's a, a phase, very very problematic idea that battles go in phases, that they you know they're they're, they're they're thrown and then we charge with swords and the rest of the battle is done with swords is clearly wrong. That clearly there are other ranks or supplies of, of javelins and even spears being provided or being available to certain numbers of troops who maybe didn't throw theirs as the battle progresses. But I think that there's a there's a thing of throwing and then drawing and charging that, that gives an impetus to uh, taking advantage of a, of a devastating uh, javelin volley, for instance. And I think also there's an interesting thing in the sense of even though we now sort of think that the idea of the wooden pin, one single source telling us about it, isn't quite correct, that the idea that the javelin head would bend when it comes into contact with the enemy um, shield and therefore make the enemy shields less effective or even not allow the javelins to be thrown back is something, again, that's an advantage for javelins that's not present with archery or indeed sling fire uh you know we do have some evidence from xenophon of, of archery you know the the greeks on the retreat in the anabasis picking up the persian arrows and firing them back although again there's some issues with the, the arrows are too long for the per, for the for the um the greek bows and things like that so i think that there's a there's an advantage in javelins in that that you don't get with the other weapons so uh if you you know if you've thrown your volley of javelins into the enemy shield wall and even if it hasn't caused casualties it may well have disrupted their line it may well have got tangled in their shields and then you follow that up with a a short sword charge which of course the romans do to great effect throughout their career as 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 an empire you've got an advantage to that so i think javelins there we are Um, i can summarize all my things why javelins that they are a short range weapon that probably answers the second part of your question: If javelins, why not an atl atl? Because you're not trying to get range; you're trying to get an effective volley followed by a charge. Uh, and of course, I think also the proper use of an atl atl is more training, whereas you know throwing a a javelin. Um, those of us who've done javelin at uh, school athletics quite some time ago for me, um, you know, everyone knows how to throw a spear, kind of thing. Uh, but you know, I I, I jest, but I think the distance casting in terms of the Roman pila throwing is not necessarily going to be the, the the important part. It's going to be a volley of of thrown javelins followed by the charge. Um, speaking of, you'll note one of the things in Roman movies, uh, and I think I may have said this before on the po- the big podcast. Uh, you find in Roman movies that there's never any javelin throwing. It's always marching with javelins and stabbing with javelins, which, of course, they're not designed for, although they could be used in that sense, which is kind of, again, the flexibility of them. But also the fact that uh, OHS means, you know, throwing javelins is very uh, dangerous and we don't do it, except in the 1930s movies in Italy, the uh, 1936 Scipio Africanus uh, in Italy, they're throwing javelins everywhere. And it's it, from an OHS perspective, it looks harrowingly uh, dangerous, but uh, very effective to sort of communicate how that might have looked. So there we go. There's my summary. I think that javelins are less training, can be used in armor, 
they provide a short range volley fire weapon that can then be followed up with uh, swords drawn and that um, even when they are used by troops that are supporting um, they're a shorter range support rather than a long range support of archery and or sling fire i hope that answers your question robert and we'll see you again for the next ancient warfare answers thanks very much Thank <laughs> you.